This is the most beautiful cruise in the world, and it needs to be on your bucket list. Hey guys, where are we? <laughs> we just completed a seven-day Alaskan cruise with Norwegian Cruise Lines, and it was easily the most stunning cruise that we have ever been on. We experienced views of massive glaciers, towering mountains, dozens of whales, hundreds of seals and otters, and arguably the most breathtaking scenery that we've ever seen in our entire lives. We will be taking you through the famous Inside Passage, visiting the biggest glacier in North America, and seeing more wildlife than we could have ever imagined. If you were thinking about booking a cruise and can't decide which one, trust us, by the end of this video, you will want to be booking this one. So with that, let's dive in. If you're new here, we're Giselle and Steven, also known as The Lover's Passport, and we're taking you on bucket list adventures around the world every single month. We started off this cruise out of Vancouver and we actually have a full video on the best hikes and most beautiful places to visit near British Columbia and Vancouver. I would highly recommend going and checking that out down in the description. As soon as we set off sail from Vancouver, we had beautiful views of the city before going into the Inside Passage. The Inside Passage is known for its beautiful scenery and its jaw-dropping mountainous views. We just left the port in Vancouver and already we're seeing some crazy whales right off off the side so much fun we are on our way to Alaska and yeah we'll see you there you basically go through a deep fjord you see lush rainforest all the way around you and the great part is is it's a protected area so you typically do not get too seasick and the boat is very stable as you go through but you will have super dramatic conditions the entire way through and you can spot humpback whales dolphins sea lions bald eagles we even saw some of the famous goats on the mountain as we are driving through the forests along the shorelines are stunning and sometimes you can even see a bear if you guys are looking so one thing that we would definitely recommend bringing is binoculars if you are a wildlife lover now with that let's go ahead and jump into our room tour Welcome to our stateroom here on Norwegian Jewel. This is our second time on this ship and let's show you around. We have a balcony room. So that means we have a nice comfortable big bed here. And then of course the balcony, which is a must for an Alaskan cruise from what I've been told. So we have a nice doorway out here where we can sit and enjoy the glaciers two chairs and a little table thing. And then inside we have a little futon. I believe this pulls out. And then of course our bed, our TV. We have lots of storage here. There are a handful of plugs on this one. We have two USBs and a plug over here. And then we have some more plugs over on this side of the room. But just note that there's not a big amount of room for electronic charging. Next up for the bathroom, it is your standard cruise bathroom here. We have our toilet, a sink, and then our shower. But it's honestly pretty decently sized. So when you come on in here, like I'm five foot eight, five foot nine, you have a nice amount of room here, but if you're like six foot five, it might feel a little claustrophobic. Um, but overall it is the stereotypical cruise bathroom. So that is our stateroom. We'll see you outside. One thing I will say is that we always recommend a balcony room for your Alaskan cruise. We had stunning views during the entire cruise and it made it so even if the top deck was extremely full, we could go down to our balcony and have a nice moment all to ourselves, taking in the view. One thing we always say to do when you get on the cruise ship is make your dinner reservations. A few of our favorites on the Norwegian Gem, which is what we were sailing on, is making sure you guys go and get a spot at Le Bistro, which is the famous French place and also the only place where you can get their champagne on the ship. Next, we would recommend stopping by Cagney's. This is their steakhouse and one of our personal favorites. We always make it a tradition to go to Cagney's every single time we go on an NCL cruise. All right, yep. it's dessert at Cagney's. We've got a raspberry creme brulee, the most massive seven chocolate, or seven layer chocolate cake. Oh We've got the cheesecake, and Steven's got a port wine. Good stuff. The last place you do need to make reservations for is the teppanyaki restaurant inside the sushi area. This place is so much fun, especially if you are going on this cruise with a group. The last two places that we would recommend checking out are obviously the garden. That's gonna be where we went every single morning for breakfast. We are now on our way to go grab some breakfast from the garden cafe. This is probably the go-to spot. This is the same breakfast every day. It's not that special. Hey. <laughs> 
breakfast is happy, happy, washy, washy. And then if you guys want 24 hour food, you guys can always head over to Oshin's. Oh boy, oh, we got, got some food there. coming in. Look at all this. Look at all these people. Oh, <laughs> look at them, boy. We are in the famous Oshin's. This spot is a must. It's the only 24 hour restaurant you can go to in the entire crew, so time to eat. Very mid food, but it's reliable. So get the pretzel bites. Get the, the nachos wings, are good. The nachos. Couple mojitos. Be great. Look at this beautiful view. A couple of our favorite areas on the ship were the gym. We love that we could go and work out and have beautiful views of the glaciers at any time. Just finished up my workout. We are heading back to the room. Um, got a bunch of stuff playing, but the gym was awesome. Did a little loop on the outdoor uh, outdoor jogging track. Now we go take a shower. Literally like exactly what we do at home, it's crazy. As well as it's right across from the spa. One thing that we always like to do is get the spa pass so that way we have access to the thermal spa. We have steam room over here. There is an ice bath in here. We have the sauna, there's a jacuzzi. We have the outside ship view. And this is what the thermal spa is like. This is where we love to spend our time. It's at the front of the ship. Such a cool spot. You can also get haircuts and facials here, and Giselle had a facial inside, which she loved. We also ended up doing a massage, and in our opinion, we have had massages from all over the world. We think that Norwegian's massages are in the top three. After our first sea day, it was time to check into our first port, which was Ketchikan. We are officially off the ship. We are headed into Ketchikan. It's a beautiful day. This is actually the rainiest city in all of Alaska. And we have sunshine. So really excited to get into the town. This is the home of all the lumberjacks. It has the most totem poles out of anywhere in the entire world. It's the salmon so, capital of Alaska. Yeah, so we will see you inside Ketchikan. We're on the shuttle. Ketchikan is often called the salmon capital of the world due to its rich salmon fishing grounds. The waters surrounding the town are teeming with five species of Pacific salmon, making it a key location for fishing. Ketchikan actually has the world's largest collection of standing totem poles, which you can see throughout several different locations, including Totem Bite State Historical Park, Saxman Totem Park, and the Totem Heritage Center. So when you're walking around Ketchikan, if you're looking for things to do, definitely keep your eyes out for some really amazing amazing totem poles. Once we got off the ship, we decided to head over to Creek Street, which is one of Ketchikan's most iconic landmarks. We are now in the town of Ketchikan. We're right in Creek Street where you get these beautiful town homes right behind. It's really interesting history actually because this used to be the prostitution area until it started to get built up. It's the first spot that most travelers would stop in before they kept hitting up north to Alaska. So we're gonna be enjoying the town. We already got a salmon donut, which was phenomenal, might I say. All right, guys, they have a salmon donut. We are gonna try. This thing, it's loaded. All right. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, that's sad. fire, bro. <laughs> wow. I want to open this. Let's get a close up of that donut. Yeah, show it off. Do I have a salmon mustache? Yeah, you do. Oh, boy. And now we're just gonna be cruising through the town. Let's keep going. Ketchikan's also known as one of the rainiest cities in North America with an annual rainfall of over 150 inches, which is insane. Locals embrace the rain, but we actually got really lucky with the weather and we had a beautiful sunny day here. But typically we would definitely recommend bringing some rain gear just in case it rains on you because it is very common here to not really see the sunshine. Now, if you're looking for the cult classic excursion on the cruise to do in Ketchikan, it's probably going to be the Alaska Lumberjack Show, which is a popular live performance where real Alaskan lumberjacks compete in events like log rolling, axe throwing, and tree climbing. And it's an entertaining way to get a taste of the region's logging history. If you're looking for a more natural experience, a little bit away from the port, you could also go check out the black bears roaming around the natural reserve. On day four, we arrived in Juneau, which is the capital city of Alaska, but it's unique in that it's only accessible by boat or plane. There are no roads 
roads that connect Juneau to the rest of the state or North America. It gives the city almost a frontier like feel that uh, we found very, very fascinating. One of the biggest things that we recommend doing here is visiting Mendenhall Glacier. All right, what are we doing, G? We're going canoeing to a glacier. Instead of doing the visitor center though, which is what we recommend, we ended up doing a Mendenhall Glacier excursion, which gave us the chance to paddle up to the beautiful waterfall, as well as we came within a hundred yards of the actual glacier, stopped, walked up, was able to get extremely close and just watch the magnitude of it. It's definitely an adventurous excursion though, so I wouldn't recommend it for everyone. You do have to dress very, very warm. We just finished canoeing out to this beautiful glacier. It is absolutely incredible. Alaska already blowing our mind. But the great thing about Juno is there's so much to do. Like I was saying, you can go to Nugget Falls right outside the Mendenhall Glacier area. It's this picturesque waterfall. And then you, there's also Tongass National Forest, which is the largest temperate rainforest in the world. It has beautiful landscapes, lots of good hiking. You can see bears, eagles, more salmon. And I would also recommend doing the Perseverance Trail. It winds through the old mining ruins and offers beautiful views of the surrounding mountains and waterfalls there. So would highly recommend getting out and making Juno one of your more adventurous stops on your cruise, which brings us to Skagway. Good morning. Today we have arrived in Skagway and we are actually really excited. We might get to go on a helicopter tour today weather pending. This is a tender port, so we're gonna go grab some breakfast, head onto the port. We are here for a full 12 hours, so we're really excited to go and explore all that Skagway has. We'll see you in Skagway. <laughs> We've made it aboard. Welcome to Skagway. And we originally had planned on doing a helicopter ride up to a glacier, but unfortunately, due to the rainy weather, that was canceled. So instead, we decided to go downtown and go explore the cute little quaint streets. So arguably, the most popular thing you're gonna wanna do in Skagway is the White Pass and Yukon Route Railroad. It is a narrow gauge railway that was built in 1898 during the gold rush to transport prospectors over the White Pass. And today, it offers scenic train rides with incredible views of mountains Tins, glaciers, waterfalls, and tunnels. Now make sure to book your ticket for this in advance. We tried pulling an audible and going on the train instead of our helicopter ride since it was canceled. And unfortunately it was completely sold out. So if you wanna do this railway, make sure to book your excursion through NCL or your tickets, which we'll link down below in the description box if you wanna book through another provider. Now the downtown area was super cute. We decided to go in and of course try some Alaskan King crabs, which were delicious. There's also a lot of really good Good food in this little area as well. So you could go in and try some fry bread. You can go to the chocolate shop. There's a lot of really cute stops like that. We also decided to head over to Lower Reed Falls and go do a small little waterfall hike. It's about a 30 to 40 minute walk if you're walking all the way from the cruise port to the trailhead. However, you can also hop on a shuttle or a taxi over there, which would save you a lot of time. And then it's only about a five minute walk up to the waterfall. And it was really surprisingly cool. Uh, it was a very nice waterfall, big bang for your buck, and we highly recommend checking that out. If you're looking for one last thing that you could do in Skagway, you could also do a Zodiac boat tour. This is what a lot of our friends decided to do. And they said it was so much fun and one of the best cruise excursions they've ever done. So we'll link that down below for you as well. After we finished in Skagway, we made it over to our personal favorite cruise port of the trip, which was Glacier Bay. Good morning. We have officially made it here to Glacier Bay. We are cruising through it. We have about from 6 a.m. until 3 p.m. taking the views look at these beautiful mountains and we're going to be at the glaciers experiencing it at 9 45 and 11 45 so we're going to be taking you through the full experience we just got up right now around 6 30 a.m we're going to go grab breakfast before hopefully the sun shines through and we have some beautiful views this is a full day at sea cruising through glacier bay which is supposedly one of the most beautiful national parks and we're going to be able to take it all in and share it with you so here we go
Glacier Bay National Park was on our bucket list for a very long time, and it definitely lived up to the hype. The national park covers over 3.3 million acres of pristine wilderness, from towering mountain peaks and dynamic glaciers to lush rainforests and deep fjords. And this area was a must-see destination on any Alaska trip. So if you can, make sure when you're choosing your itinerary for an Alaskan cruise that you have Glacier Bay on your itinerary because it's actually not on everyone's. This is the, this is the view. <laughs> oh, look at that. Something fun about visiting this national park is that you'll actually have rangers on board the cruise ship where you can go and chat with them about the history of the national park. They'll come and do a talk about the wildlife and give live commentary about what you're seeing as you cruise through Glacier Bay. We got to visit John Hopkins Glacier and the Marjorie Glacier, and they were both absolutely stunning. We have made it here to Glacier Bay National Park, and this is the Marjorie Glacier. This is one of two glaciers we're going to be visiting today. It is absolutely stunning. The nice thing is they turn the ship around here. We're here for an hour. And so each side of the ship, you're able to see a really great view of the glacier. They have a lot of time here to take photos and videos and capture the beauty. If you're really feeling it, you can go get some hot chocolate. There's a ton of hot chocolate stations all around the ship. We indulged in quite a few glasses and now we're off to the next glacier. And we're gonna take in this beautiful national park. It's millions of acres large. So it's a really big park, but cruising is one of the best ways to see it. Our last location before ending in Seaward was Hubbard Glacier. Hubbard Glacier was one of our personal favorites because there's two different ways you can do it. You can either stay on the ship, which stays about one to two miles off the edge of Hubbard Glacier, and you can take in views of the stunning mountains around it and use binoculars to get a good view of the Hubbard Glacier. But what we decided to do was actually take the excursion that brings you up and close to Hubbard Glacier. And most of the big cruise ships cannot get in that close due to the ice. We just got back from experience at Hubbard Glacier. It's right behind us. It was such an incredible experience. It's 75 miles long, seven-ish miles wide. It's the largest tidal glacier in all of North America. And we got to see it calve a ton, which is when the ice falls into the water probably saw a dozen or two dozen pieces happen. Such a fun experience. There were some harbor seals and once again, we got so lucky with the weather. Since Hubbard Glacier is the biggest tidal glacier in North America, it's very fast moving and has lots of calving happening at all times. While we were there, we probably saw it calve over a hundred times where you saw the ice directly fall into the ocean. It was incredible to watch. We had our jaws on the floor the whole time. And unlike most other glaciers in the world, Hubbard Glacier is unique and then it's still advancing. Many glaciers are retreating due to climate change but Hubbard Glacier continues to grow and occasionally closes off Russell Fjords to create a temporary dam of meltwater, which can dramatically impact the local environment. Our guide actually said that it can grow up to six feet in one day when it snows a lot. And with that, our first Alaska cruise comes to an end. Right now it is disembarkation time. We got our Starbucks, we grabbed our last breakfast, and we're all packed and ready to go home. But if you guys have a Alaska cruise on your bucket list, we highly recommend doing it. This was one of the best ways to see Alaska after seeing Hubbard Glacier up close and doing Glacier Bay National Park and all the other stops. You're into wildlife. This September sailing time period was really, really good. We saw a lot of good stuff and we had some really nice weather with the exception of Skagway. So definitely recommend doing an Alaskan cruise. We had a great time with Norwegian, so we also recommend doing it with them, but there's plenty of different cruise like, itineraries you can do. So with that, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and hit that subscribe button for more adventures, and we will see you back soon with the next adventure.